We have another great episode, very special episode today because we have David Jetson here. And Dave, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. The first thing I would like to to ask, you know, because we're going to be talking about financial uh, therapy, financial counseling, but what what the heck is that really, you know, to, to start off with? Um, you know, a lot of people might not exactly know what all that entails. And so could you describe what financial counseling is, um, what you do, and really what led you to get into this industry? Sure. Well, I'll start off with what led me to get into this industry, and that was a a financial uh, planning friend of mine, Rick Kaler, asked me if I would help him work with clients because he says, we put these wonderful portfolios together, and they don't follow through with them. (laughs) And why not? Well, it was really about the emotional piece. Mm -hmm. People People like to make it about the money. I guarantee you it's never about the money. It's about the emotions that are behind the money. And so what I do is help people see where the emotional obstacles are in their retirement planning and that type of thing, and actually create strategies to do create workarounds. For those who really want to, we can get into the emotional aspect and try to uh, change that emotional outcome and that Many people aren't really interested in that, but they are interested in seeing workarounds. And so, so when I work with financial planners, I've done that. I've actually sat in on financial planning sessions with other financial planners to help look at the emotional pitfalls, if you will, and try to address it right within the session. Yeah, and uh, I'm I, I was really drawn to this because I feel like an, an emotional reaction to money for me very early on in my life is probably a very, very big reason I'm in the industry that I'm in. Uh, mm-hmm. My first memory of money was telling my mom that she could sell all my Ninja Turtle video cassettes if it would help out the farm. Wow. And because even I, at six, I didn't know what the heck was going on at that point, but I could tell something wasn't quite right because they were selling the things you don't normally sell. Like it wasn't right. the harvest time or it wasn't the cattle, but there was a lot of you know, like personal effects. Right. And sure. so that, I guess, was, you know, my little way of, of helping out. Well, and I think you bring up a really good point when I work with people and, and I do, I lead workshops and that type of thing. And one of the, I'm, I'm doing right now is on uh, financial codependency. And what's really interesting is is the patterns, the way we interacted with money as a child does impact the way we interact as an adult. And what's interesting is our first money memory experience might not even be associated with money. It's about something that has value. And just like what you were showing with your your Ninja Turtle set is is it had value Mm -hmm. and, and so, so you wanted to help it. So I think it's a wonderful example. Yeah. I don't know how much value it had to anybody else, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, now I feel like there's, ha- there has, there have been, and I, I've recognized this, a lot of scripts I've had to flip in my own mind in order to even get where I'm at when it comes to money, because I realized that there are probably certain habits or certain mindsets that I had that probably weren't the most conducive to, to, you know, being successful. And, and so how would you help someone that, I guess I'll give an example of some of the things that I normally see when I'm sitting with people is if somebody has been very, very frugal their entire life, and mm-hmm. now it's time for retirement. And most of my clients have done a really good job saving. And so they have money to spend and we've created a great plan that they, they can see how they're not going to run out of money, but they still have trouble spending that money. Sure. They, just, they just can't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, that really ties in what I was talking about a little earlier is financial codependency. And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is, is when, when in this case, the money is more important than me. I, my self-worth is low. And so, so I ha- put my self-worth into other things. In this case, it's money. Mm-hmm. And so, so how do you help people really relax around money? It's really about helping them feel that they deserve it or, or matter enough in order to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's, a, that's an emotional process to see. How else did I learn that I didn't have value or matter? Is there, is there certain things that you might help them go through in, in order to help change that, that mindset? 
Well, that's a deep mindset. And that one's like going to be a difficult one to, to change unless you really want to get into the, the deep emotional work associated around that. And so, so this is where it's really about if I'm coaching a person, I might work on, on um, doing some exercises that, with a different mindset. What I find what will help people many times if they have a reason for doing it, like reason for spending, they can't spend it. People that really are, are spend thrift can only spend the money if they have a reason. I don't know if you ever found someone who, who really wanted a car, mm -hmm. for example, you know, I have a Tesla, for example, and there are a lot of people like that. Like, I, the only reason I can get that is, is because I'm, I'm, the, I'm helping the environment. Exactly. Or, you know, that type of thing. And so, so this is one of the things as a financial planner is if you want to work, do a work around to be more about how do you give them a reason for spending the money that helps them. So is that like a, a justification for spending the money? Correct. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, smash the uh, notification bell. That way you're always updated whenever we uh, bring on new content and we're going to try to hit so many different subjects so that you can find yourself possibly in some of these examples that we give. Uh, and if that is an area that you need help in, reach out to us. Uh, our information is going to be in the notes here. You go to millerretirementgroup.com. There's ways to reach out to us there. I think our link to our calendar is going to be in here. If anybody ever wants a free 15 minute phone call consultation to find out whether or not there's anything that we can do to help out your specific situation, let us know. We want to empower you to live the type of retirement that you deserve. Thank you and take care.